So this is the analysis services screen and what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new project and quick question, how many of you currently do work in bids and how many of you don't? Sorry, I, got, I didn't get the question. Uh, do you work in Business Intelligence Development Studio? Yes. Yes, okay. So that's one, two, three, four yeses. Uh, who's left? Salvatore? Yes. And who's missing from that list? Joe, yes, okay. So um, normally we take the rest of this hour just talking through um, bids quite a lot in detail. And I think as all of you have worked in bids before, I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining that this is how you create a new solution and so on and so forth, because if you've already used bids a bit, you'll know that. What I'm going to talk a bit about is how it's different from the other uh, project types. So if we create a new project, we've got obviously our business intelligence projects, and we're going to create an analysis services project. Now, one of the other things that's quite important for you to notice is this import analysis services database. So if somebody out there has created an analysis services database and you want to get the source code for that, what you'll do is you'll actually say import the analysis services database. Okay, so we're not going to do that. We're going to create a new one and I'm going to call it May Training. Oh. And I'm just going to create that. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got our traditional solution explorer, and the first thing is that analysis services needs to be able to connect um, to a particular data source to actually bring data in. So I'm going to say, um, I'm on the wrong one, I'm going to say create a new data source. Okay, now if I've created previous data connections, it'll actually save them up. Um, so you can reuse them again and again. I'm not going to reuse any of them. Say new. And this I'm sure is a screen you've seen before. It's just a connection to a uh, data source. And I'm of course going to connect to AdventureWorks for this session. Alright, so easy enough. Test the connection. Hit OK. Nothing too complicated. Okay, now this impersonation um, credentials is quite important. So if you're connecting to, say, an Oracle data source or something, what username should it use to connect? OK, it's uh, SQL authentication, put in a specific name. Now, these two are quite important. Use the service account. We'll always use the service account of the analysis services instance to connect to the data source. This will always use the credentials of the current user. Now, that sounds like it'll be the right choice, and it'll work when you're in development mode. But as soon as you deploy it to the, the cube, it doesn't necessarily translate into the user that you think it does. So what we typically do is we'll use this inherit uh, command. And what the inherit will do is when you've deployed it through to analysis services, it'll then use the uh, service account. Otherwise, it'll use the current user. This is the most common place for a deployment error that we've found. Um, somebody's got the user credentials wrong and isn't logging into the database with the right credentials. All right, so data source name. I'm going to call my data source. I'm just going to call it ADW. Cool, let's hit finish. So here's our data source. If we double click it, we can, of course, edit all of that other information. A um, couple other th extra things here. Query timeout. Query timeout and naught means it's not going to timeout. Um, read commits or snapshot. These are actually lock levels when you're connecting to the database. And maximum number of connections. So maximum number of connections affects something when you're doing a process. Say you're processing 
10 fact tables in 10 dimensions, maximum number of connections means it can only actually access 10 of those at a time. So that can be quite important if you're trying to optimize things like how much load you're putting on your source server and that sort of thing. Okay, impersonation information, exactly the same. Cool. So now we've created a um, data source. What I'm going to do is we're going to create... Sorry. Guys, one of you... Uh, there's quite a lot of feedback coming through. I can hear my own voice. Can you just put yourselves on mute just to kill that feedback? Okay, that sounds better. Cool. Okay, so the first thing we've got is data sources. Where is our data source coming from? Second thing we've got, and this is quite important when you're building your dimension models, you've got data source views. So in the data source view, if you've got a nicely streamlined um, star schema or snowflake schema database, the data source view is pretty dead easy to work through. Now, first thing is what data source do I want to pull my data from? Dead easy. Um, I think I pointed that to the wrong database. I did, in fact. I'm supposed to be pointing to AdventureWorks. Let me just fix them. Cool. Let's try that again. Ah, there we go. So what, what you get on the left-hand side is you get a list of uh, available tables. And, of course, you can filter the tables over here. So I'm going to filter by Internet because I know that um, I've got a couple of Internet sales. And I want to bring in my fact table firstly. Okay. Now, some of the other things you can do is you can then bring in all the various dimensions. Let's filter that for everything. You've also got a... Um, add related tables. That's quite useful from the fact that you hit it. It follows the relationships that you've got from your um, from from your database. Pulls them in. Now I don't really care about fact internet cells reason right now, so I'm going to remove it. Okay, give your uh, data source view a a name. I'm happy with that name. What you can see here is when I said star schema, as you can see, this really looks like a star. You've got your fact table in the middle. You've got your uh, various dimensions around it. Here we can see that there's three relations between the fact internet cells and the dim date. And if we go and we right click on one of them, we can say edit relationship. And we can see that it's picked up this is the due date. Um, the second one over there is the order date. And that one over there is the ship date again. 